Life and Death in the Third Reich by Peter Fritsch presents a comprehensive and chronological examination of the rise and fall of Nazism, offering valuable insights into the motivations and attitudes of German citizens during World War II. Drawing on diaries and letters from the period, Fritsch delves into the complexities of German society at that time. Harvard University Press published this non-fiction work in 2008. At the outset, Fritsch probes the question of German citizens' complicity in the anti-Semitism that fueled the Nazi party. He contends that racial doctrines heavily influenced German policies right from the outset, with the ultimate goal of achieving complete German sovereignty. As train stations became conduits for transporting Jews to concentration camps and gas chambers, citizens had some awareness of what was happening, though their understanding of the full extent of the genocide might have been limited. The Jewish population had all but disappeared, and had the Germans not lost the war, Jews would likely have never been seen again in the Third Reich. Further into the book, Fritsch recounts instances illustrating how some Germans were aware of concentration camps, such as the mayor of Auschwitz who knew of the camp in his territory and the grim fate of Jews sent there. Fritsch presents various perspectives from German citizens, including those who resisted the new regime, those who welcomed it and those who oscillated between surrendering themselves to the national community and dissenting. Initially, support for the Nazi party was influenced by a combination of factors, including coercion, fear, professional ties, and misunderstandings about the party's politics. Diaries from that era reveal that citizens often rationalized Nazi actions through the lens of racial coordination in social life. Fritsch believes that had German citizens been fully aware of the details of the final solution, the systematic extermination of Jews, history might have taken a different course. The book offers a thought-provoking exploration of the complex dynamics at play in German society during the Third Reich era. In his writings, Fritsch explores how, without specific knowledge of Auschwitz, the killings during World War II could be perceived as events in a brutal war, rather than systematic extermination. The rise of Nazism after World War I tapped into a nationalist ideal of German life, uniting the country against a common enemy, the Jewish Germans, whom they considered as the other. This emphasis on racial purity fueled a desire to eliminate this perceived threat from within. Initially, the acceptance of Nazism was met with reluctance. However, a combination of discontent with the Weimar Republic, a longing for national solidarity, the lingering humiliation from the previous war's defeat, and an effective propaganda campaign eventually swayed the majority of Germans to support National Socialism. Propaganda was disseminated through marches and radio broadcasts, and the Third Reich facilitated the rise of individuals from lower social classes to positions of power. Living in Nazi Germany was like balancing on the edge of life and death, as it stemmed from the beliefs of National Socialism. Jews were scapegoated as the cause of German humiliation in World War I and the supposed reason for the country's impending failure. Even as Germans became more aware of the fate befalling the Jews, they turned inward to protect themselves, especially as the Allies closed in during the later stages of the war. Many German citizens actively participated in depleting the Jewish population, turning in Jews, confiscating and selling Jewish property, and justifying violence against them often labeling them as spies for the Allied forces bombing German cities. The absence of Jews in the later stages of the war only served to reinforce the narrative that Jews were to blame for the destruction caused by the war. Fritsch highlights that for many Germans, a clear conscience was achieved by distancing themselves from the Jews, even when they became aware of the atrocities occurring during the war. As Fritsch delves into the topic of racial grooming, he reveals how the acceptance of this ideology led to the implementation of the 1935 Nuremberg Laws, which aimed to categorize German citizens based on race. During this period, literature advocating eugenics and genocide emerged, promoting the idea of genetic reconstruction to purify war-torn Germany and create a strong Aryan race. These notions also fueled the ambition to colonize other countries, including Poland and France. Ordinary citizens actively participated in turning Germans into Aryans through various projects. The Hitler Youth and older youths underwent training in camps to mold them into upstanding Aryans, while those deemed undesirable, such as communists, socialists, asocials, and disabled youths, were separated and sent away. German soldiers, too, became deeply involved in genocidal tactics, indicating an ideological commitment that surpassed mere comradeship. 
Fritsch attributes their actions to desensitization, a sense of victory euphoria, and an unwavering commitment to their beliefs. The Holocaust, with its devastating impact, forever changed the world's perception of mass murder and genocide. Fritsch supplements his analysis with documents written by Jewish Germans, letters from soldiers, and anti-Semitic propaganda, offering a comprehensive view of the events. However, some critics argue that the book falls short in addressing the plight of non-Jewish victims of the Holocaust and neglects to acknowledge resistance efforts during that dark period. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.